Welcome to the Blue Collar Barbarians podcast, brought to you by the Blue Collar Barbarians Network, your new source for all things savagery. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a special episode for you today. But before we jump into that, I want to take a second to say thank you to our sponsor for today's show, Tier 1 Kinetics. We couldn't do that without these partners and all, um, and all these other great companies that want to help us give back to the community. And Tier 1 Connects is doing that, and they provide tactical tools for your needs. Go ahead and be sure to check them out. We'll hit the link in the episode. Diving right in today, guys, I'm really excited to bring you guys one of the most barbaric crane operators I know. Arguably the only person that could give me a run for my money if I'm half asleep. And uh, my best, my one of my best friends, and his name is none other than Randy Anus. Randy, welcome to the show. Hey, good to have me. Yeah, good to have you, huh? <laughs> and then we got the big bear. Uh, oh. Randy and I, a little backstory for those listening. Randy and I have traveled from Timbuktu to here to literally all over the United States chasing cranes, doing just literally the most unruly approach and unrecommended approach to accelerating your career possible. No way it should have worked. No way it should have no worked. Way. You, you, the only way it worked, we were just oh, savages. Savages. That's, that's all it. there is to it. Sometimes, uh, and we'll touch on this in today's show, but fake it till you make it is, uh, that's the theme that we're going to roll with here. As long as you got the goods to back it up, that it works. <laughs> if you don't, I mean, if you're not, if you're not on it 100%, no, it's going to crash and burn. Crash and burn? No. Yeah, crash and burn. But, you got the, if you got the skills to back it up, fake it till you make it. Rise to the top, baby. Rise to the top, but uh, but so it's not for the faint of heart. Oh, absolutely not. I love it. Absolutely. But before we get into that, let's back up a second here, Randy, um, and let's tell these fine people a little bit about your background. Give them a little bit of context where you come from, what you know about blue collar. Oh, blue collar. Uh, born and raised in uh, Northeast Arkansas, small town of five thousand people. It's all blue collar. Blue collar there. Uh, father's a Riverboat captain for many, many years. Uh, still doing it. Uh, yeah. So all you know, essentially, is Oh, yeah. Uncle's work. farming. You know, I grew up you know, teenager hauling hay, sun up to sundown, working since a kid, grocery stores, parks and rec department. You know, it's just out there in the field, in the, in the elements, working, doing all of that. Yeah, so you know what it's like to get down and dirty and oh. get physical. Oh, yeah. And your dad, being a riverboat guy, I'm sure that's pretty blue-collar in itself, right? Oh, I mean, you live on a boat for 28 days at a time, pushing, keeping America running up and down the river. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty rough. 18-wheelers eat shit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can put, just uh, kidding, I can't remember just the kidding. numbers. I'm, I'm wanting to say it's something like. 700 semi trucks in one bar or in in a tow uh, 15 barges something like that i don't know it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot so what happened after for you you went to, uh i know you're a navy veteran yeah uh, so i joined the navy in 2003 and uh i launched planes off the catapults oh the a cat guy. yep cat uh, operate and maintain so uh you know there's the fun part of pushing the buttons and operating them on the flight deck but the other side of that is uh, you do the maintenance on them, too, and I've <laughs> never been more dirty in my life. Uh, <laughs> typical day was, you know, it, it, it harkens back to, to a very blue-collar sensibility that, at its extreme. Uh, you know, a normal day for the cat guys out to sea is 18 to 22 hours. There wasn't enough people to run two shifts on those things. You get up as early as you need to, you launch all day, and if something broke, uh, you fix it that night, and something always broke. Something so, always broke. Right. Traditional yeah. military fashion, right? right? Got to keep it going. Zero room for failure. Uh, there's, there's, there's no margin for error. So on uh, that, just because I know you, let me let me highlight something. There's, there's a portion of a type of jet, I think, that you were one of the last people to catapult. Yeah. So uh, we had, uh, in my, my last deployment, we had the last two F-14 squadrons as they were transitioning over to F-18s. Uh, and I got to launch the very last f-14 that ever flew off of a carrier so it's kind of kind of a little personal piece of history that little I personal there. piece of history yep. the very last one last one off of a carrier off of a carrier yep and my There's boy got a, to do it huh right now there is one in new york at the, at the historical display right there they say it's the last one it's not actually the last one <laughs> you heard it here folks from the real source here right 
So let's move forward a little bit here, uh, Randy, just for time's sake and just not to bore our audience, right? So we've established that you grew up blue collar. You worked around farming communities. Your dad was a riverboat captain doing the tug thing and absolutely crushed it at that. So your your entire life, you've all you've known essentially is just hard work, grit, determination, and just keep showing up, right? And, absolutely. And, it, and you know, I'll, I will pat your already big head and say that <laughs> it shows – in your tenacity and and the way that you carry yourself in your work ethic and i respect that about you personally that's one thing i uh that automatically drew you and that kind of speeds us up to kind of where where we are past connected and can we talk about that a little bit oh yeah so i mean uh, i was i was in for a change uh, i was ready for a change and i started on the river boats as well and uh unfortunately i've got a little got a little touch of adhd and i got a little bored doing it sometimes uh it was a little eh, different conversation, <laughs> different field, not our expertise. So uh, I got into cranes and, uh, you know, I met Jonathan at a time that we were both uh, pretty much starting out in the industry. Uh, we were both hungry. And, uh, you know, at the time, he, 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 I didn't know him from Adam. And he says, hey, uh, he said, I, I'm looking for somebody to go with me down to this job in New Mexico. Uh, you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, no clue. So, you know, we got two guys that just met, uh, take off in a vehicle, go down to New Mexico to do a turnaround job. And, uh, oh, way out of our depth at the time. We had just, uh, we just got our, uh, our crane certifications and uh, had some experience in the industry, but uh, not to the level that we now know we probably should have. <laughs> yeah, I would, I, I would not recommend to anybody just breaking into the, the industry of the cranes in specific. Don't. Like, don't take our roadmap. I mean, it's not, again, it's not the way I would do it if I did it again, but here we are. Right. Here we are. So let me back that up a little bit. So Randy and I, it's funny because this is the Blue Collar Barbarians Network. And part of the, the theme in this network idea here is, is like solely about the idea that it's important to your network is your net worth, Right. And so what we're trying to build here, Randy, to give you a little bit of context before we jump into get hitting these people with this absolute gold that you got. But the biggest thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to teach people that there's not one roadmap, but a thousand oh, to absolutely. get there. Thousands and thousands and thousands of different methods. And um, with that, the one of the biggest pieces that I personally took away from all my experiences this now over a decade that we've been doing this is that... Um, who you know matters and it absolutely your reputation matters 100% making phone calls to those different people that you've built or established within your network. All of that stuff is extremely, extremely important. And, um, you know, we, you say reputation matters and, and I can't stress enough quick moment to interject this, that, that you, and everybody knows this, you know, you can, you can work for, I, I like to look at it kind of like a 10 to one. You could work for 10 weeks on a good reputation. You could lose it in a week, you know, and that's, that's true for many things, but hundred percent accurate. I, oh, reputation. You cannot stress enough how you want to maintain a good attitude and a reputation. Good attitude. Hmm. Oh. Seems to be a reoccurring theme for the show. Mm -hmm. Fake it till you make it. We'll touch on more. We'll touch more on that in a yeah. minute. Attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so going forward though, so what you're not understanding is, so Randy was in my network and I met Randy at a time where he was, uh, as you could see, he's just a charismatic person, right? He just sticks out to you. He sticks, he's top of your mind, kind of human. He's just all around funny dude to be around. For those of you that watch the show and personally know him, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't take the dude anywhere. He talks to everybody. Everybody is automatically attracted to him. You automatically lose value when you stand next to him because everybody wants to know about him and nobody cares about you because he's just an interesting character, but I'll digress. That being said, well, very large human being, yeah, yeah, very six, large. six, eight, four, twenty. Come on, boo, boo. No, but for real though, the cool thing about big Randy is his, his attitude is very, he's just that guy that you could literally take him anywhere as, as the story goes. So your network, we both just recently had got our certification so we could efficiently like legally run a crane anywhere in the United States. And, uh, I had this opportunity to come up to go down to New Mexico on a seven week project, working seven tens, uh, paid a bunch of per diem. The hourly was great. 
It was a pretty risky move, but it was somebody that was willing to let us get our foot in the door. I told the gentleman straight up, hey, I just recently got certified. I'm newer at this. Like, I don't have a ton of seed time. I have some, but I'll give you everything I got if you'll give me a chance, man. I'm just looking for a chance to prove myself. And he said, done. Can you be here in a week? <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you, happen, do you happen to know anybody else? I'm looking for a couple more guys, too. So I made some phone calls after sitting with it, and he was one of those people that just stood out to me. And so I called him, and Randy was like, that money, if that's real, that's too good to be true. So let me talk to my wife. He gets back to me a couple hours later. Fast forward two weeks later, we're sitting in Artesia, New Mexico, at arguably our first official crane job. Yeah. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. And we got okay, thrown. What are we doing? <laughs> we got thrown right in. But, you know, it, we, we, we got into it, and you know, we knew what we knew. Yep. We, 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 had, we knew that we had the skills to do it. We didn't exactly have the experience that we probably needed to do it, but we knew enough to do the job safe, to run it properly. We got in there, and you just do it. That's it. You just do it. Um, you know, you, 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 you go by the book. You know, there's, there's, there's procedures and ways you do these things for a reason, you know, learn what you do, learn, learn what you learn, learn your craft. Well, don't just learn how to do something, you know, back to the riverboat thing for just a second. Uh, Cause I get off topic kind of quick, but this is important. My old man always told me when I started out on the riverboats, he said, son, don't learn how to lay a wire. You, uh, you lash barges together with wires. There's different ways you wrap them up. They do different things. Uh, he, he always told me one thing he stressed really hard when I was learning on the deck. He said, don't learn how to lay a wire. Learn what a wire does. Mm. You uh, guys that learn how to do something in one particular way, if they don't understand why, what, it, what they're doing, how they're doing it, you, know, you don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that learns one way to do things. You know, because then you don't have any options and you're not always going to be able to do it the one way that you learned it. But if you learn why you're doing what you're doing, where, where's the goal to accomplish, you know, the start, the finish, the, what, what you have to do. Um, you know, so that's always uh, stuck with me. You know, don't learn how to lay a wire, learn what a wire does. And then you can have many lay, ways that you can lay that wire to accomplish that goal. That's really good. Oh, it's, it's great. It's really oh, wow. great. I got to give credit to my old man for that one. I, you know, and that applies to... The crane world that applies to carpenters that I see it all the time on the deck, you know, I, from towers, if I can jump to that real quick, I see guys all the time. They, they, you try to give, give them some options. You see a guy out there working hard, doing something and, and you see, maybe see some way that he could do it more efficient for him or, or he's not killing himself. And, you know, uh, as far as attitude, you never want to tell him, Oh, Hey, do this, do this, do this, do this. So, you know, say, Hey, uh, you know, you, you could do this or this or this, it, whatever way is easier for you. You know, your perception and your delivery of things matters. Um, Very much so. So you get a guy that learns, don't don't be the guy that learns one way to do something. Always have options. Learn, understand what you're doing first. And, you know, we understood the procedures and how cranes worked and all of those things. We didn't just learn how to do one thing. That let us go down there, and we didn't know what we were going to be running down there. No, you know, we had no idea. We had, we had no, no idea what we were stepping in. Ran anything from an eight and a half ton carry deck to a uh, 120 ton, uh, you know, uh, all terrain crane and uh, rough terrains and whatever. Shit, we'd never seen, never set up, never, <laughs> never sat it. We didn't right. know nothing about it. In fact, on on this particular job, then we'll move forward here. Uh, I remember they asked us, uh, "Have either of you guys ran that 90 ton over there, the one that just came off the low boy?" We were like, "No." Can you figure it out? Sure. Yep. And we went and we sat in that thing. And like 15 minutes later, I had that thing folded up, drove down, parked in between the alley, set up, and ready to go to work with that 90-ton link belt. I'd never even ran a link belt before that, to be honest with you. I yep. had to read the book in a very, like, expedited 10-minute class on oh, yeah. through the book and then had push call, buttons. Called me over. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you can have that on the Tadano. <laughs> anyway, moving forward. This, uh, so me and Randy, we go to that job and, uh, it, it went well. We made a ton of money. Been good. Made a lot of money. Had fun uh, at Cattle Bear and eating steak every night. Oh, we were kings back wonderful. before kids. Wonderful. <laughs> Prior to kids. Uh, -uh. uh, 
we went to New Mexico. We crushed it. We that job went from there. Did we go? Where did we go? Home, I think, for a little bit. Oh, it's all kind of a blur. Yeah, to be honest with you, <laughs> we went from there, <laughs> to, there home, to home to another to project to taking a full time job actually with one of the sister companies of the cranes that we rented down there. Right. And that was really where we kind of broke into the Wild West. Uh, I got a full time offer to go run a brand new 275 ton all terrain crane uh, sight unseen. And that was my opportunity to really break into the crane rental game and get uh, my hands dirty with being an operator on a crane. So yep. I accepted it and I threw all of my belongings in the back of my Subaru at the time, if you remember that car. <laughs> oh, yeah. And hauled ass. And I. Lived out of a hotel in um, Carlsbad, New Mexico for six weeks. Right. I lived out of a hotel while I just moved down there and started working until I could find a place. Mind you, this is a time when oil was booming. Things were wild. I mean, there was... Stupid busy down there. I went to work for the same company at a different branch, and uh, oh, it was, it was just What sick. was the Marriott? $450 a night there? Oh. Or something like something that is crazy. what it costed at the time. It was insane. Like, I mean, you know, we made a killing down there, though. I mean, a typical week was like 80 to 100 hours, just absolutely killing yourself. Yeah. You know, just, you're, you're going to work before the sun comes up, and you're going to you're getting home way after the sun goes down. I mean, I well, remember there was a period of three and a half months where I worked every day, yeah. seven days a week, <laughs> you, you 18 know, you hours. have 20-something days, uh, 30 <laughs> days, 40 days without a day off. It, it, yes, every day. Yeah. Man. And then from there, we got fed up with that. Uh, actually, my sister had a baby, so I had the opportunity to come home. Yeah. And I took it. You stayed for a little bit longer. A little bit. Made a little bit more money. And uh, got in on that Anadarko gig. Made some real money. Kind of <laughs> broke into Gus and the gang there. And, a little uh, bit. Short time. <laughs> yeah. And then you came back, too. And we yeah. uh, at that point, we had occurred enough time to journey out. So we got the prerequisites at that time to be able to come back to the union and be a journeyman. Right. And so we did that. We came back to this area and both of us joined the union and yeah. we time took to off settle here. in and, you know, have some kids and work local. You know, I was, I was spending, oh gosh, there was a couple of years. I think I spent 10 months a year on the road. Yeah. You know, it's nuts. That's it's no way to live and have a family, but you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, he's got three kids. You know, he's he's out there on the road all the time. You know, because where he lives doesn't provide much opportunity for running cranes, and he's a savage. He just goes wherever it is. I mean, it's all about his family. I know he, he misses them a lot. But yeah, he's handling business. Hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Exactly. People got people will understand that. Yep. But backing up a little bit, just for the just to educate our people here, so. A lot of people ask me about six figures, right? That's a big question that right. you see kind of everywhere. It's like, how do you get to six figures? How do you make a hundred grand a year? It's like I, an American dream benchmark or something I, in a lot of people's minds. I guess. Cause that's where mine was at first. And now it's right. way bigger, way bigger. <laughs> the, the truth Such is humility. No, well, I just <laughs> okay. gotta be real. It's oh, gotta yeah. be way bigger because like the truth is when you shoot for a hundred grand, you end at 60. You're like, right. and then you should be thankful that you made that. But if you shoot for a hundred grand, it's not at what, well, not what it was. It's yeah. not. Like no. times have changed. Absolutely. But so like, let's help, let's give these guys some context here. Cause I do want to give them some value and like what first year being a crane hand, can you make six figures? Yes. Would it be very difficult? Yes. Um, but what did you do your first year? I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe 80, 85, I think. 80. Yeah, somewhere in there. I had a couple more months than you at Mark's, so. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I remember, um, I, I said, for the audience here real quick, I set a goal when I first got into Cranes. I said, I'm going to give myself three years to make six figures. If I'm not doing it, I'm going to recheck that. And I oh. did it. I did it in like six months after that. But yeah. so my goal was way too small. And that's not to say anything about me. I just took a lot of risks, as he knows. I, I had some know. more time off, though. I, I like yeah. taking time off. Yeah. And I worked... Anywhere I could get in a crane, in a seat, any project, anywhere in the United States. and Oh, yeah. We went out chasing a lot of work, you know. And, and, and the thing is not just chasing the same work. Yeah. We, you know, our, our goal was to get out there, get the experience that we needed to become better operators. Always, always hungry for that next thing. Uh, 
to make you a more well-rounded operator. We, we chase different types of work. I think you were driving pile on a barge somewhere. Oh. I was, uh, oh. I, Setting dome pieces. Yeah, I, oh. just working in uh, wastewater treatment plants. I always said, oh, almost said something else. Um, you know, any types of different cranes. Uh, my first crawler that I was on, uh, you know, the first day that I ever ran a crawler on a job that I was getting paid for, I, I knew how to do it. I, I knew everything about the rig. I knew what to expect. I knew all of these different things, but that particular kind of rig goes back to learn what a wire does, not how to lay a wire. Because I didn't exactly, I didn't know exactly how to run that machine. Yeah. But I knew what it did. I knew what to expect. I, I understood the principles of what I was working with. The very first day I was running a crawler, I was, uh, you know, I was two lining a nearly seventy thousand pound precast wall and doing a mid air handoff to a four forty that was flying it on up and setting it. Yeah, that's absolutely on a four percent incline. I mean, we, we were I was parked on a loading dock ramp. This is absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> uh, I mean, absolutely crazy. Yeah. You tell anybody, they say, hey, well, you know, hop in this crawler right here. You ever ran one? No. OK. All right. Hook up to this. Set. No. <laughs> Insane. Absolute. Whoo. Thinking about that now. That was nuts. Yeah. Handing off 70,000 pounds isn't easy either. You know, two line in it. Yeah, we, we had a, we had. We had two line on a rooster shift. It's, yeah. So, you know, picking it up, you had to trip this thing midair. Uh, so I was used to pick it up off the truck and trip it. And then they got a man lift and did a midair handoff to another crane. I mean, that was just crazy. First time in a crawler. First time. Yeah. Yeah. But but that wasn't your last. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, we made it. And then we made it. Then we chased work from there. We ended up going to... Idaho and running a slew of different rigs there right. and actually learning from a guy how to really run a friction rig. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, cowboy. Yeah. You want to talk about that? This guy could throw these crane. I've never seen somebody run a crane so fast in my life. Artist. Ever. Oh, he was an artist. artist. And it was friction. He'd be slinging shit, just letting it fall. It was insane. But. One thing that was really cool about this journey is like everywhere we went, every move that Randy and I did, and this is where I want to really start to dive in for our listeners here, right? right? Is every move that we did, we tried to, we made it a goal to learn something. And uh, from my end of things, uh, traveling with you, one thing that I, I really took away was that we held each other accountable every day to try to get at least 1% better. That oh, was absolutely. like a theme, like, hey, how can we be faster how can we add another function how can we communicate better how right. can especially for me i was a younger guy right like right. the communication part was a struggle for me at first and you yep. got and that's something you have to learn and sometimes your attitude uh comes off arrogant and you don't mean to but right. you're just you're young and you're hungry and and when you're young in this business people are going to have a set against you no that, matter what, that was a struggle around it. Face. That was something that you had to face. Uh, and and, and uh, I think we had many conversations that, hey, you know, don't worry about it. Just let it slide. I mean, look, look there's, you know, because they, they on, on in one particular job, uh, just because of our age difference, solely because of our age difference, which is not huge, but it was enough. Uh, they, <laughs> they looked at him like he was new and like I was a veteran and we were the same. Yeah. Uh, simply just age bias. That's all. So if you're a young guy coming into this industry, know that, be receptive to it. And, uh, an old German boat engineer told me one time, he said, uh, life is hard and it is not fair. And the sooner you learn that better off things will be. If you're a young guy getting into this, people are going to have, you're going to have prejudice because of your age. It's, you know, it, yeah, it's not fair. There's no reason for it. You could be a, a prodigy in the, in the field, yeah. you know, period, the end, like me. Like him, period. Uh, the end. But people are going to have a set against it, and people are going to have, not just with age. People are going to have all kinds of uh, things that they want to get down on you on in this field, and just know that it, just l let it roll off. Yeah. You know, just let it roll off. Got to have duck feathers. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, and dude, that's in construction in general. Exactly. But like that's that's where I want to go with this, right? Because I want I want to talk about some of the skill sets that translate. Yeah, the green um, horns and the hazing and all of that other stuff. You got to let this stuff roll off. It's part of the industry. Yeah. I know people say, "Oh, you can't do that now," and it, it happens. Yeah, it's gonna happen. But listen, like for for those guys that are in that position, do you have anything that you would tell them? Like, uh, we're not in the question part of this yet, but like. This is a really important thing, right? Because, like, for me personally, uh, and you know this because we traveled, right? Um, 
what was hard for me wasn't that like I didn't know how to run the machines or communicate. It would be that I would literally try to to not sell myself to these people or be something I'm not, but I would literally try to just get them to give me a conversation an opportunity. And I, for me, that was a big struggle for, I don't know, a year, year and a half where people would just cold shoulder me compared to you. Like they wouldn't, they want to give me time of day to talk to them. They, they would kind of give me the shit detail. Like, and, uh, I, if I was a lesser man, it might've, it might've broke me. In fact, we know people that it did break. Oh yeah, we did. did not make it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the attrition rate and doing things the way that we did. Yeah. It's got to be huge. I, I absolutely wouldn't recommend it, but you know, if you're a savage, get out there and try. Yeah. Um, we, we, I think the ultimate thing of us running around the country is that we gained experience in many different areas to make ourselves more well-rounded operators. Yes. And, uh, we did that. We came back home here, decided to, to start a families and things like that. Uh, you know, and we had the skill set to hang in whatever job we could get around here. And we did. Yeah, except for for me because I know the people listen. I'm not a truck driver. I don't claim to be. I don't care to be. Like not my thing. No. Uh, when it no, comes no, to no. running crawler cranes and stuff like that, like get at me, you know, or tower cranes, like coming at me. But we don't care about the truck driving part. And for those guys out there in the crane world, that you can yeah, drive the truck okay. You just don't want to be standing behind him if he backs it up. Yeah, not in a city. <laughs> But all that mess, right? Uh-huh. At least I don't hit bridges. Oh, uh, shots fired. Anyway, moving did I forward. Hit a bridge? Where right. did I no, hit a bridge? That wasn't you. Oh no. I, uh, I mean, I've hit we, some things before. We got another friend. Yeah, he likes no, to hit never, a lot of things. I didn't hit a bridge. I, I didn't hit anything with a truck. I did hit a fence with a crane one time, but uh, yeah, I got no. a cattle guard. Oh yeah, you got one oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hit one with a counter swing on a crane. I wasn't used to. I was filling in. Yeah. Hey, you know, it, it's chain link fence. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> excuses <laughs> we all have them oh, but yeah. hey but let, like seriously let's give these people some gold here man because i um like i said like i know your story but i don't want to bore them talking just cranes and stuff like that oh, right yeah. and and in, in that outline i sent you we we were talking about like this i really wanted to get into this the fake it till you make it and aggressive career movement right um and that's what you're we, the man for that yeah well well the aggressive career move thing the, the biggest thing that I want to uh, highlight to people in their any career, in the, like especially trades, is the more reps you get, the better you get. But to get those reps, you need to take those swings at different things like you were talking about, right? So like what we did, and I'll digress in just a second, what we did was we would literally search different cranes, different jobs, different hours, different uh, industries that the cranes were operating in yeah, from wind, industries too. gas to uh, general construction, general construction, bridge uh, construction, barge construction, remote for me running up in a mine 65 miles in the middle of nowhere yep. for living in a man camp, um, all terrain cranes, taxi crane fleet. I mean, like literally we would take whatever project would put us at any kind of period of accelerated growth yep. to move up the ladder. And although that was risky, it paid off. Paid off. It did. And it set us up to where we are now, uh, making phone calls. Hey, do you want to jump in a tower crane? Da, 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 da. And then I tell you, hit this button, hit that button. I don't know if I can do this. You can do it. Oh, yeah. These guys call us too. Hey, Jonathan tells me to give you a call if I were doing this. Okay, yeah. Who's who's this? Okay. All right. Whatever. (laughs) All right. What you got? Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, try this, this, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. You know, it's... uh, you know, oh, and one real quick thing, anything in the trades, don't ever be one of those guys that hoards your knowledge. No, okay? share yeah. it all. Share everything. If you're doing your job, you won't lose your job. All right. Some people get nervous. That, oh, no, no, I'm not going to teach anybody anything. Oh, he's going to take my job. He's going to take my job. No. Uh-uh. Dude, if you take my seat, good. Yeah. I did my job then. Right. Literally. Like, if you could take my seat, you'd, I did my job. Unless it's for my piss poor attitude. Then I didn't do my job, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh, I'm sure you've told the people how we got into towers, right? Oh, uh, no. No? Oh, no. maybe on another episode. Maybe on another episode. Yeah. Uh, I, I get a call from this guy. He says, uh, he says, hey, uh, he said, let's go get our tower cert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in the crane thinking, gosh, this crazy guy. What is he doing? <laughs> I have no desire to go. I'm not, I'm not keen on heights. 
Yeah, yeah, let's go get our tower certs. I mean, we got everything else. Let's, let's go ahead and add the tower cert and another feather in the cap. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, that's all it'll be. I thought, okay, let's go do it. We get the tower certs, and uh, what is Two weeks later, he calls me and says, hey, I got us a tower job. <laughs> he said, uh, I got a job doing the, you know, the running this tower here, and they need somebody else. And I'm thinking, no, <laughs> no, uh-uh, not happening. Uh, no, no, sir. I, I'm perfectly fine right here on the ground. I'm doing good, uh, staying busy. But, you know, it, it – uh, Eight said, years we'll just later, call and talk. four cranes in Vancouver later. Oh, and- five, four. <laughs> One, two, yeah. three. Here we are five. still. Oh. Still at it. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he calls me up. He said, just talk to him. I talked to him. I told him. I said, look, I'd never run a tower. I told him what I was running. They said, if you can run that, you can run a tower. I said, okay, it's on you. Mind you, I had run that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, he had been on one before. I No. First day climbing a tower. Nobody was there to show me anything. Gosh, I had 102 fever. It was like 39 degrees outside. I had the flu. Uh, just, nobody was up there. I ran the crane for the first half hour without the swing brake on because the guy had manually lifted the swing motors at... Yeah, and so <laughs> savagery, just holding it everywhere. Oh, just nuts. craziness. Yep, and I figured it out. And Here we are. Yeah, I was nervous as all get out. I was sitting up there. That thing was swinging and moving. I'm not keen on heights. You know, the call came in for the first pick, and you just get into it, and you just do it. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And now five years later, I mean, you know, it's tough to know how you stack up when you're a tower hand. Uh, it's tough to know, you know, am I, am I doing, am I doing things on par with the industry standard? You know, it, it, am I, am I better than average operator? Am I worse than average operator? It's tough to get that kind of feedback. So you just go in there and do the best you can every day. That's it. You just always try to make it faster, smoother, cleaner, safer, maybe not exactly in that order, you know, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, and then, then one day you, uh, just a few years later, you realize that, You've got guys on the ground giving you feedback that have been doing this for 20 years thinking, you know, telling you, man, you're probably the best operator I've ever seen. But they haven't ran with J-Matt yet, so it's all good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of them have. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Some of them have. Uh, they've, they've given me feedback on this guy. They said, yeah, he's 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 just about as good as you are. Yeah, just about. <laughs> no, it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what we did, ladies and gentlemen, is we literally – we stepped up to the plate and we said, how do we get to 10,000? Absolutely. And where that comes from is uh, mastery level of things comes typically at 10,000 reps. That's where they consider people a master. If you can even consider yourself that. So what our quest was early on was how do we get to 10,000? Right. So that as fast as we can, as adverse as we can, because at the end of that map is, what we thought at the time was that's where safety is. That's where job security, that's where, man, were we wrong on the industry changing, but like, right. That's what we believe that was that for having a family for kids, for dreams. Like if you can get to that pinnacle at 10,000, you'll never worry about work. You'll yeah. make X amount of money. And the truth is that it's never that's a all plateau. bullshit. You know, it's never there's a plateau. No plateau. You know, there's no plateau to this. You know, you can, you can, you can plateau on it. You can be the guy that, that learns it. it. I could take my skill level right now and rest on my laurels. And do just fine. Yeah. If you were like that, if you were built like that. It'd be all right. Oh. Maybe. But why? Until some other guy comes along and You know, wh- why, it? why not keep going? Why, why would I, why would I just rest on the laurels of where I'm at right now? What, what? What does it cost me to keep pushing? You know, what does it cost me to keep pushing to constantly try to be better? Um, you were talking about attitude yeah. and attitude on the job site. Now, this is is for all trades, but, you know, this means a little bit more as the as the tower crane operator because you're, you're a guy on a job site that is generally kind of well-respected most times. Uh, so your attitude can influence a job site sometimes. If you come up there and you're in a bad mood, and everything like that, it then it, it, you get pissy. And the guys get to talking on the ground and oh, what's up? You know what's up his butt today, or something like that. But you come Poison in with a good attitude. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I mean, it, it's a bad attitude is very pervasive on a job site, but so is a good attitude. It is absolutely. Uh, you can have guys that coming in and, and you're dealing with carpenters. A lot of guys come in with a bad attitude. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you, you can know. change that too. Yeah. Like, let's you talk about the power of this attitude thing. Cause I want to expand on this. We talked about, um, in previous episode, five things on the job site and attitude was, I think number one, even to be honest with you, that we discussed that your attitude will sink you or it will make you, but there's a Absolutely. real power, a real, real power to being able to look at somebody, no matter what's going on externally, no matter what's going on internally and be able to look at somebody and be like, Hey, good morning, brother. Or, Hey, Good morning. Or that guy tells you, hey, I had, how are you doing this morning, man? Oh, nah, 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 nah. wine, 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 wine. And you have the opportunity then to either let that affect you and have take that negative energy as your own, which will show in the way you run your machine or in your work in general, depending on what you're doing in the career, it will, it will show. Absolutely. Or you have the power to take that as an opportunity to try to give this guy a little bit of a uh, a boost, like try to lift him up and change his perspective on life a little bit. And you can just encourage, Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that man. But I mean, little tiny things that you can do can literally change the oh, tempo yeah. of the morning and oh, the production. Yeah. Absolutely. Which also makes you more valuable. Does it not? Absolutely. You're uh, you know, in this industry, uh, you get like these general superintendents. And I, I would say that what makes a good operator is uh, so, well, uh, someone told me one time, I can't remember who it was, but he, he said that some guys, he said operators that stay working are usually one of a couple of things. They're either really good at the job and they have a bad attitude or they're really terrible at the job, but they have a great attitude. I agree with that. And I could you think know, when you said that, oh, people yeah. came right to mind. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> you, can, you can be bad at the job and have a great attitude and still have work. Now, do I think that that's a good, you know, plan for success? No, 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 no. Be, be both, be both. You can be the best at the job and have the best attitude on the job site. Um, you know, it, attitude matters. I, I'm on a job right now. The, the guy wanted me there because I was good, a, a good operator and I had a great attitude. Um, you know, and, and having a good attitude is just, what does it cost you? What, how does it affect you? If somebody comes in with a bad attitude how much more work is it? What does it cost you to try to flip that into a positive attitude on the job site? You know, somebody comes in, they're whining and moaning, and oh, I got this. Hey, you know, do I need to climb down there and have a hug? You know, throw a little humor into it. You know, throw them off balance. Get them back to, you know, right the ship. Um, you know, because if somebody's got a bad attitude, they, they could be bringing something from home to work. Uh, I think you probably touched on this before, but, yeah, work, yeah. work life, there's got to be separation there. Um, it's like you listen to the show. You, oh man. Oh, wait, well, we, out. we always talked about this, you know, uh, we've had conversations with this, uh, you know, we, we've both struggled with it. We've yeah. had things that go on at home. Uh, you gotta have work life separation because, uh, I mean, doing what we're doing is dangerous. We, we talk about it and, you know, being a savage at it, but you have to be careful because you got people's lives in your hands. Hey, getting everybody home is my first priority. Oh, absolutely. To be clear. Absolutely. And I will be the first to tell you that what goes on at home matters. It, it does. If it you does. If you can't separate that, it shows. It does not. There's days where I can run a crane like nobody you've ever seen. And then there's days of, say, I'm, me and my wife are having a dispute or something that you would think I've only been doing this for two weeks because mentally I'm just – Right. It's a struggle and there's a lot to try to keep up with and it affects how you communicate with other people on the job and how their attitude is perceived to you. Yep. I mean, dude, that, it's crazy that you bring up the attitude thing because one, one, we hit on it and then two, the, the separate the personal life thing. Like this is such a key component to success in general. It is. Everything that you do, ladies and gentlemen, every single freaking thing you do depends on how you approach it and you attack it. And you have to believe that you can do things. You have to have the attitude for success. If you go into it thinking I might lose or I can't do this or I don't know. Then you're not thinking about what you're doing. You're not. No, you've got to be 100% focused on what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're just starting out, if you're pushing a broom, no matter what you're doing, be the best at what you're doing. Yeah. Andy Priscilla, uh, he's a guy I listen to, serial entrepreneur, yeah. a self-made billionaire, fantastic guy. Shout out to First Form. But uh, Andy Frisilla, he says, um, one, he says you have to be selfish to become selfless first and foremost, which I really, I personally, I like that, right? Like yeah. in the career sense, you have to dig in. Oh, you yeah. have to focus on that so that you can give the best version of you to those around you and to those of you on the job site or to for on behalf of your company even. Right. So like that really sticks out to me. And then uh, 
it's it's also like with that attitude like dude you have to have belief absolutely you have to and when you're saying like you're not focused like yeah yeah i i love that but like if you don't believe in your core that you could be the best you never will be no never not at all especially when times are tough right because there's days Hey, life happens. Lots going on. Got to be in the crane. Got to climb it with COVID or whatever other kind of bugs going around. Or, hey, maybe I, you know, just <laughs> I'm going broke. Maybe Taco I, maybe Tuesday are, is yeah. wreaking havoc on you, and yeah, you go up going there through and, a divorce. What, what, yeah. dude? Name it. I mean, we've seen it all. And I tell you that the guys that I've seen and that I really respect, the ones that are really barbarians about this, they dig into who they are and why they're doing it. And they just execute regardless of any circumstance. It's, I believe I'm going to make it, and this is what it takes to make it. And they execute. Period. Right. The end. Oh, yeah. And that's something that, like, when you talk about attitude, I just, I won't get past that. But I want to move past uh, a little bit. Let's go to aggressive yeah. moves. How, how, how do we get into making really productive, aggressive moves in any career? I don't want to specify. I know our background in this case is with cranes, but arguably let's go back to your history you did the riverboat thing uh you did the military to show some resilience right like on just taking things as they come you then were a bouncer like i was we have some of the same background and in between construction and trying to find our feet post-military life right and figure out who the hell we were at the time and then obviously now being like husbands and fathers and different things and congratulations on your upcoming son oh yeah thank Um, you with, with all these different external things, I think like something I really, really, really want people to take away from this is how you can make aggressive moves, but not what, where is there too aggressive? Is they're not aggressive enough? What? I mean, there can be too aggressive, um, in the field of what we do. There's cranes. That, I mean, we, I'm sure at some point we've looked at some jobs and been like, okay, no, that's, that's a little. It's a little too much. Oh, I've turned uh, stuff down. Yeah, no yeah. Things. You you've got to know. You've got to know. You always want to be. You always want to be pushing for that next thing higher to improve yourself. Um, but you know, you're not going to jump out of the gate. Uh, you know, you're not going to jump out of the gate in your first job running a you know truck mounted lattice with uh, main and luffer and a fixed jib <laughs> on the end of it, making picks at 240 feet out. It's, you know, be smart enough to know that you could. Know what you know. Know what you can and can't do. Always push to that next level, but be learned enough to not bite off more than you could chew. It goes back to your reputation. If you do, it will fi- stay you're, with you're you. gonna find out. And it will stick with you. You can't fake you can't fake it in a lot of these industries in the trades. You I know we say fake it till you make it, okay, and this kind of goes against that, but there is a certain amount you can fake, but if you're if you're in a pos- if you're in somewhere that's above your station, it's gonna show. So know what you're doing first and foremost. Always push for that next thing, but m- make sure you're able to fake it till you make it. We yes. might not have stressed on that quite enough, but uh, make sure that you're you're able to handle it. Uh, don't jump into nothing. Don't don't jump into something that is too far out of your depth yet. You'll get there. You'll get there. Absolutely. Always yeah. stay pushing and trying. I mean, try to be better at everything you do. Always learn. Always learn and always learn from anyone. Um, there was a there was a time on a job site, a brand new guy uh, was out there, didn't know anything about rigging. We had a difficult rigging problem. I can't remember where it was, what it was. Uh, the takeaway from it, and I think it is the most important takeaway, is that this guy who knew nothing about it, he suggested a way of doing it and it didn't work at all. It, it was not going to work, you know, and we, we, we told him it was not going to work. But the what he mentioned caused someone else to think about something that would work. Yes. So if he hadn't have had that, that bad idea, it was a horrible idea if I remember right, um, just way out in left field. But it made someone think of something that would work. So always, always take information from anywhere. Anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, like, on that fake it till you make it part, I'm going to back up here for just a half a second. I get a little like, off track sometimes. No, no, you're totally fine. You're, My uh, mind's you're, a bag of cats. Yeah, well, you're do, you're going the right direction, so I'll take that. But we're but on that fake it till you make it thing, like, there is absolutely an element 
that you do have to it, listen. Don't go do something you cannot do. Like you literally know I cannot do this. But if you have the skill set to expand on this for these people, if you have the skill set and the general know how, and you can aggressively take something that maybe like I know 40% of this and I think I can, I know, not think, because this is that mind frame thing, right? You got to get your mind wrapped around this. I know that I can cover the gap on the 60% I don't know between yeah. asking questions, watching and learning on the exactly. fly, and the improvements that I make daily. And if you can make those, that's what I mean by fake yep. it till you make it. Now, if you're not a crane operator, for example. Oh, that can translate guys, to any field. Don't that can be translate a, to any field. Yeah, don't be a guy that's never sat in the seat of a crane and then go and take a 500-ton crawler with 600 foot of stick in it. No sitting on a pad boom that you got to love don't that's not faking it till you make it no that's faking it till you kill screw somebody. it up and kill somebody or yeah. and that's a career ender to be honest with absolutely you. but if you've ran a rt and then you think you could maybe run a crawler crane next and you were to have an opportunity that you could tell somebody like I haven't got much experience, but can you give me a quick rundown? And you're one of those people that can run 30 different types of mobile crane, and then you get into this. Well, you can fake that till you make it. The exactly. guys on the ground don't need to know that that's the first time you're in a crawler crane. Yeah, They don't. They I mean, don't need to know you... it was the first time you're in the tower crane. They'll figure that out on their own. Right. And if you have the right attitude to get back to that even more, oh, yeah. it will actually carry you to where these people want to help you. Right. They don't care that you're a little bit slower. They'll, they'll give you that critique. And you know what? More importantly, they'll give you the honest feedback. Oh, yeah. And feedback is the most valuable thing that I think that any tradesman could get. The yeah. feedback is your story. Yeah. You know, you, you if, if you don't know what you don't know, then you're not going to know if you're doing it right. I, I mean, you, you get feedback on, on what you're learning as you're doing it. Um, and sometimes failure is feedback. Absolutely. Like, period. The end. Absolutely. Like it's okay. You to, learn what not to do. That's it. You know. Now in our business, there's small yes. margin for yes. error, so you don't want to have too many failures. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, you, biting off. Okay, so for something even outside of the trades, uh, biting off more than you can chew. You know, you don't want to turn 16 and get your driver's license and then uh, take off hauling an 18 wheeler. All right. It, wouldn't recommend that for most people. Some no. can do it, I'm sure, but uh, you know, you don't get your license at 18 and hop in a NASCAR in a Cup race. Uh, I mean, it, I know that seems extreme, but if you get into cranes, bring it back to cranes for more specifically here. If you get into cranes and you know you've ran a, a carry deck before, you don't hop into a 500 ton with 600 foot of stick for your next rig. There's too <laughs> many. There's too many fundamental dynamics of what you're doing at play that you don't understand. Yeah. Uh, you can't scale that up from your knowledge base that you currently have. And you can't, there's not a small amount to fill in from being, you know, taught a few pointers here and there by someone. Right. Awesome. Well, listen, we're, we're short on time and oh, yeah. you uh, are going to have a baby anytime. So I really don't want to go over this morning, but right. I want, I want to end this on a really kind of cool note. I want to hit you with a couple of, um, questions. Um, I'm ready. And, I, and I want your take on this. So w one, obviously, cause we're talking about, this is the blue collar barbarians podcast. Right. And in the traditional sense of what a, a, a barbarian is or a blue collar, especially would be your tradesmen and anybody working in the manufacturing with your hands, labor, whatever. Right. Right. But I want a real take to you. What is a blue collar barbarian to you? Mm. You know, I, I, I had a feeling that would come up and I purposely didn't, uh, I didn't prep on that one, but, uh, you know, a blue collar to me, uh, blue collar barbarian would be, you know, it's just somebody who just grinds, <laughs> somebody just grinds, gets out there and you do whatever it takes. I mean, uh, there's, you get, you got to have a value system, you know, you've got to have a value system and when you have that, you do anything to achieve it. Uh, you know, for me, I, I've got, uh, my wife, my daughter, soon to be son, family, uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes for them. And, you know, you have to be careful in that you're not so much of a savage that you're out there doing this. You got to keep focused that I want to do it for me, but, but ultimately it's for them. And that's, that's for me. That's, that's what I feel being a savage is, is, uh, uh, being a bit of a tender savage, you know, it, it's not for me, it's for them. 
Um, and I think you hit a certain age. I mean, when you have a wife and family, that's, that's what it's for. Yeah. Beautiful. How would, um, moving on question number two, how, how would you suggest someone get into the crane world? Like, uh, so depending on where you live, I mean, there's, there's the union side of things, there's non-union side of things. And, uh, you, you, you have to recognize that both of those things are not an option geographically. Yeah. Uh, if you live in a union dense area, uh, apprenticeship program, yeah. definitely. 100%. Uh, we didn't do that. I didn't kind of, I didn't come up in that. Uh, uh, I was from a place where I got rigging experience in, in non-union and, um, uh, so it was different for me, but if you live in a union dense area, apprenticeship program, you know, find, find guys on job well. sites, get into it, uh, ask questions and, uh, be humble, you know, be humble is the biggest thing. Uh, you can't, you can't go in there with a cocky attitude because you'll find out real quick. And anybody who knows, knows somebody who don't know, yeah. there's no way to, there's no way to get out there and, uh, you know, make it seem like you know what you're doing to people who do know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, no, dude, I, I love that. That's, that's an incredible piece of advice. And be I, I would just, just say the same. If I did it again, be and, humble, show up, do the work, yeah. show up and do the work. Yeah. Be that humble, show up, do the work. All right. And then, uh, here's the one thing. Cause I, w- I want to give these guys with something that they, the whole point of this is to have both sides of the conversation. Like, and we'll talk another time, probably in part two, about what companies could do to incentivize keeping guys better. But for time's sake, just give me three things that tradesmen do that they need to improve on. And you've said attitude, right? Like that's a big one. But yeah, give me three that give me something. Give me some gold really quick before we close the show up. Uh, so attitude is definitely one, probably the biggest one. Um, never, you know, never rest. Uh, understand what you're doing. Always look for options of what you're doing because something inevitably will happen where you can't do it the way you normally would. Uh, don't ever be the guy that's only got one way to do things. Um, just always improve, always improve, always look to, to be better at it. Uh, that's two. Yep. And three, uh, get out early on Friday. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> work hard during the week get out early on friday all right uh, that goes back to attitude i mean may, keep a good attitude around the job site keep it light keep it fun nobody wants to be around anybody with a bad attitude Ooh. i mean if you had the choice somebody with a bad attitude or somebody with an overly happy attitude which one would you choose I mean, Over, you overly to, happy yeah you don't like either one of them but you choose yeah. the one that's leaning toward the happy side yeah all right every time uh, oh it, it, and, and wash that ass all right <laughs> what keep your ass clean okay you, you don't have to be a fragrance guy like me you know some of the guys that hey what are we wearing today you know because i wear something different about every day uh don't be the guy on the job that smells oh man that is th- that that no don't do that we got standards, all right. We work in the dirt and the grit and the grease and the mud and the grind. We don't have to smell like it. Hey, all listen, right? being a barbarian doesn't mean you can't no, be a badass. No, that's right. Being a barbarian doesn't mean, yeah. I let some soap and water get between those cheeks, all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, B.O. is a no. No. <laughs> no reason for that, all right. Yeah. They, they make things, all right. It, 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 you're working in construction. You can afford it. That's it. All right. <laughs> well, Big Randy, brother. It's a pleasure having you here today. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time to come with us this morning and share some knowledge. And, dude, there is so much gold in this. Tyler's going to have a heyday picking this <laughs> apart, I'm sure. Um, seriously, though, sincerely, from all of us here at the, Barbar- at the Blue Collar Barbarians Network, right. we want to say thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Coming. Good stuff. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah.